Electricity drives almost all of our machines and has a tremendous role to play in our life. In the activity that you performed, you created your very own battery and used the current produced by this battery to light an LED. Congratulations! Now that you know that electrolytic solutions with a combination of metals can be used to generate electricity, let us understand a few more details about electricity generation. In the following sections, we will understand the basics of electricity generation by a voltaic cell. In the activity that you performed, you used an electrolytic solution to generate electricity. This was done by the voltaic cell that you made. You lined up two such cells in series and were able to make a small LED bulb glow. Let us think about a few variations of this activity. You may try to light the bulb by starting with a single cell and see if it produces enough voltage to light the LED. If not, then we know 2 is the minimum required for this combination of metals. You can perform the same experiment with a different combination of metals, for example copper and iron where you can use iron nails, you can try iron and zinc, copper and zinc, aluminium and copper, magnesium and aluminium, etc. Basically any two different metal combination. See how many cells of each of the possible metal combinations are required to light an LED. That is, what is the minimum number of cells you need to light the LED bulb? What do you think will happen if you use tap water instead of citric acid to make the cells? Compare these results with the cell made without any solution or with the cells made by using distilled or deionized water. Distilled water is obtained when you boil water and condense the steam. In contrast, deionized water is made by passing tap water or filtered water through a special resin that replaces the charged positive and negative ions in the water with hydrogen and hydroxyl ions. You might also check the outcome of using the same metal wire as both the negative and the positive electrodes. By performing these simple variations, you will understand very important concepts about electricity generation. These principles are used for making many modern cells and batteries. The invention of cells and batteries has a very interesting history. In the late 18th century, the Italian scientist Luigi Galvani observed that when wires of two different metals are connected and made to touch two different parts of a frog's leg, the leg contracts. He was amazed by this phenomenon and coined the term animal electricity to explain this observation. Another famous Italian scientist, Alessandro Volta, showed in 1794 that two metals separated by a saline soaked cloth or cardboard can produce an electric current. A galvanic cell, also known as a voltaic cell, is the easiest and the most basic setup required to generate electrical current. Shortly after this experiment, Volta stacked alternating disks of copper and zinc on top of each other, each separated from the other by a brine, which is an electrolyte soaked cloth, and showed that the setup could generate electricity that was strong enough to sustain a circuit. He called the setup a voltaic pile. Based on this revolutionary invention, most of the electricity supply in the 19th century was supplied by batteries that were a modification of the voltaic pile. As a tribute to Alessandro Volta and his contributions, the measuring unit of electric potential is named as volts. In the early 20th century, historians excavated a set of artifacts from Iraq. These artifacts are considered to be made between 150 BC and 223 AD. Three very intriguing objects were found in this dig a ceramic pot about 5 inches tall, a hollow tube of beaten copper, and a solid iron rod. The iron rod was wrapped and inserted inside the copper tube, and both of these objects were found inserted in the ceramic pot. In 1930, the famous scientist Wilhelm Koenig came to know about this archaeological find and believed that this setup was in fact the very first cell that could have been used to generate electricity. If the ceramic pot and the two metals were actually used for this purpose between 150 BC and 223 AD, it means that humans had found a way to create electricity 
hundreds of years before Galvani or Volta. In fact, written records of such apparatus have been found in the ancient Indian scripture Agastya Samhita that is believed to have been written in 14th century AD. Although these scriptures are written in Sanskrit, Indian scholars have translated them and found that these scriptures indeed describe the design and working of an apparatus to create electricity by using metals and electrolytes in a container. So scientific terms. The movement of charged particles through a conducting material in a particular direction is what's called electric current. A voltaic cell is an electrochemical apparatus which is used to generate electrical current. An anode is the electrode where oxidation or loss of electrons takes place. This is the negative end of the cell. The cathode is the electrode where reduction or gain of electrons takes place. This is the positive end of the cell. And the load is the device that uses the electrical current in order to perform a function, for example, light bulb, in our case an LED. Some concepts that you might want to familiarize yourself with. Electrochemistry and redox reactions. The branch of science that studies the fields of electricity and chemistry together is known as electrochemistry. The underlying principle of this branch is that atoms and molecules of different elements can gain or lose electrons, a process that is accompanied by energy transfer. Each metal has its own affinity or lack thereof of electrons, and that property is called its electronegativity. It's the difference in the value of this electronegativity between two metals that determines the potential difference created per cell for a combination of any two metals. When the difference is high, like in the case of copper and magnesium, you need a smaller number of cells to light an LED. Suppose we had used copper and iron instead, the difference is less and you need a minimum of four cells connected in series to light up a red LED in that case, instead of the two that we used in our case. Hence, the combination of metal electrodes is the crucial aspect in determining what the potential difference of a cell will be. Maybe now all the 1.5 volt cells you see in the market, irrespective of their size, will now start to make some sense. Redox reactions or reduction oxidation reactions are important electrochemical reactions that involve a transfer of electrons between two elements. These reactions require the presence of an electrolyte that acts as a medium across which this electron transfer can take place. The voltaic cell that you made in this activity is an example of a device that uses a redox reaction. Every redox reaction is composed of two half reactions, one being oxidation and the other being reduction. For today's experiment, the oxidation reaction happened at the magnesium end of the cell and can be depicted by the following equation. Magnesium is being oxidized as it is releasing electrons into the solution. This reaction happens at the anode. The other half reaction, which is the copper wire interacts with the solution that surrounds the metal, citric acid in this case, to release charged ions. These copper ions undergo reduction and this reaction can be shown by the following equation. Copper is being reduced as it accepts electrons that were released by magnesium. This reaction takes place at the cathode. Together, the two half reactions can be written as follows. And upon further simplification, we arrive at the final equation. The difference between a voltaic cell and an electrolytic cell. If you compare the diagrams of a basic voltaic cell and an electrolytic cell, you will find them to be very similar. However, there is a key difference between the two cells that should never be forgotten. This difference is explained below. A voltaic cell, like the one you made today, releases energy because of a redox reaction that happens spontaneously. This energy, in the form of an electrical current, can be used to start a load, for example, lighting the LED. In contrast, an electrolytic cell consumes energy given by an electric supply to force a redox reaction. This is because the redox reaction in an electrolytic cell is non-spontaneous. An electrolytic cell is used, among many other things, for electroplating utensils, chrome plating, plating jewellery with gold, etc. The findings of Luigi Galvani and Alessandro Volta have turned out to be the foundation on which modern batteries are made. The commonly available dry cells, for example, alkaline batteries that you find in the market, have been developed on the same principle of a voltaic cell. 
not only dry batteries, but also the lead-acid batteries that are used in automobiles, inverters, uninterrupted power supplies, or your UPS, are modifications of the voltaic cell. Voltaic cell has given way to a wide range of batteries in different shapes and sizes that drive many machines like electrical appliances and electronic toys, watches which have mercury batteries, digital cameras which have lithium batteries, and hearing aids which have silver oxide batteries. These batteries differ from each other in the metals that are used as the electrodes. Different metals produce different amount of electrical current and hence are used in different devices. Also, another important difference between these batteries is that batteries made with metals like lithium can be recharged and reused. Devices like mobile phones, laptops and MP3 players have lithium ion batteries because these devices are used regularly. Despite the availability of batteries of different types and electrical current generating capacities, we still need a source of continuous electric supply. This is because the devices and appliances that we use at home, for example, a refrigerator, air conditioner, washing machine, etc., require very high power. Such a strong current cannot be supplied by batteries alone, even if we connect a hundred of them together. Because the power demands of cities are much greater than what these batteries can provide, electric grids are used to store and control the supply of electrical current. The current generated for our grid uses completely different techniques mainly in the form of electromagnetic induction by the rotation of massive turbines, which are powered by coal, gas, nuclear, hydroelectric, etc. Solar power uses photovoltaic cells for power generation. All these forms of electricity generation produce alternating current, whereas from a voltaic cell we generate direct current. After completing this activity, you have understood the basic principles of electrical current generation through a battery or a cell. These simple experiments have paved the way for more complex and modern devices that have made human life so comfortable. We hope that you had fun while performing this activity. Thank you.